This is James Liu from the Neurological Institute of New Jersey. This video demonstrates the surgical technique and operative nuances for the interhemispheric transcolossal approach for resection of an intraventricular central neurocytoma. The patient is a 32-year-old female who presented with progressive memory difficulty, personality changes, and new onset of seizures with worsening headaches and vomiting in the week prior to hospital admission. Neurological exam was non-focal except for poor short-term memory recall. CT scan demonstrated a partially calcified multilobulated mass occupying both ventricles centered around the septum pellucidum. MRI showed heterogeneous enhancement with lobulated solid and cystic components attached to the septum pellucidum. The mass measured 5 by 5 by 5.3 centimeters. Obstruction of the foramen Monroe was present with hydrocephalus. The intraventricular mass appeared to be consistent with a central neurocytoma. A transcolossal approach was performed Image guidance was used to plan the trajectory and callosotomy corridor to the tumor. The patient was positioned supine using a linear coronal incision. A right frontal craniotomy was centered at the coronal suture. The bone flap was carried slightly across the midline so that the working corridor of the interhemispheric fissure could be maximized when the dura was reflected towards the midline. The right mesial frontal lobe was gently retracted laterally and the interhemispheric fissure was dissected down to the corpus callosum. The pericolossal arteries were identified and safely protected. A midline callosotomy was performed no more than 2 centimeters. The superior aspect of the tumor was identified and extracapsular dissection was carried out to define the anterior border of the tumor. The choroid of the right lateral ventricle was identified. Gel foam was placed at the right foramen of Monroe to prevent blood from pooling into the third ventricle. The tumor extending toward the left lateral ventricle was carefully dissected and removed. The choroid plexus along the floor of the left lateral ventricle was identified. More tumor in the left lateral ventricle was removed with careful dissection off of the thalamus and the choroid plexus. The tumor appeared to be invading into the floor of the left lateral ventricle. This was carefully removed with gentle bipolar and suction. Further tumor resection was carried out using ultrasonic aspiration. The left foramen of Monroe was identified and the tumor was resected from the septum pellucidum with care taken to preserve both fornices. Using bipolar dissection, the tumor was carefully dissected from the right fornix. The tumor was also dissected free from the left fornix. Dissection was then carried around the posterior margin of the tumor. Once the tumor was detached from the septum pellucidum, the remaining tumor was readily removed. 
After tumor removal, the ventricular system was carefully inspected. There was no obvious residual tumor. Both foramen of Monroe were patent and both fornices were intact. A temporary ventricular drain was placed through the callosotomy defect at the time of closure. Dural closure was performed with a durogen onlay graft followed by bone flap fixation. Postoperatively, the patient was neurologically intact without any memory deficits. Hydrocephalus resolved without shunting. Postoperative MRI demonstrated no evidence of residual tumor.